Hi friends! Welcome to Chat and Read with Tara. How are you doing and feeling today? So my question for you today is, do you love math? If you said no, you're not the only one because according to the book that I'm going to read, four out of 10 Americans said they hate math. Hate! Poor math. It's only trying to do like everything in the world. Okay, maybe it doesn't do everything in the world, but it is all around us. When I was younger though, I didn't really like math either, but as I got older, it became more interesting and more like solving the puzzle. And I did actually kind of grow to love math. You don't have to love it, but we could try to maybe not eat it so much and see all the cool things that math actually does for us. So the book that I'm going to read to you today is called I'm Trying to Love Math. And it's by Bethany Barton. I hope you enjoy it. I'm Trying to Love Math by Bethany Barton. Mathematics, in a sense, is logic let loose in the field of the imagination. Margaret Wertheim. If you ask me, math is not very lovable. I know I'm not alone here. Four in 10 Americans hate math. Of the people at the top right, the six dressed in black are okay with math and the four dressed in yellow hate math. So you can see the green on this circle is the yay math and the yellow is the boo math. That's like 40%. Did you just use math to explain how much you don't like it? A space alien? What do you know about math? Well, math is understood all over the earth, no matter what language people speak. Five plus 12 equals 17. Except you're not from earth. Nope. But thankfully, scientists sent math out to space. Scientists took examples of life on Earth, things like language, music, and math, and put them onto golden records. Their golden records went on space probes they sent into deep space for curious aliens like me to find. As you can see, math went on the golden records. Golden records went aboard Voyager spacecrafts. And if you look at the writing on this little white rectangle here, you can see they use binary code, addition, fractions, multiplication. They sent you math? No wonder aliens don't come visit. They should have sent cookies. What are cookies? I'll make you some. They're so much better than math. Let's see, I just need two and a half cups of flour and three quarters cup of sugar, three quarters cup brown sugar, and one cup of butter. Hmm, looks like I need two of these to equal a cup. Wait, baking is just a bunch of math, isn't it? Whoa, in fact, this whole recipe is basically a word problem. Let's look at Vicky's mom's cookies recipes. We have some fractions, two and a half cups. We have conversions. We have temperature, preheating the oven to 375 degrees. We have time, bake for nine to 11 minutes. And we have, well, looks like we have chocolate. But, isn't that a good thing? Without those measurements and fractions, what would you end up with? A burnt pile of mush. Uh, I guess you have a point. Okay, you see this math problem here? 785 times five. I am going to try to love it. Maybe if I stare at it, 
and think about cookies. 785 times five. Nope, I'm already bored. What if I jazz it up with some extra numbers? Let's see, maybe to the left, I'll put 8,910, and then to the right, six divided by 12, and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.16. And add some of these symbols like right angle and a symbol for pi. Oh, I have an idea. I can also draw a line with an arrow at the end, which is called a ray. And uh, what else? Whoops. <laughs> you got a little carried away. This is way too much math. Can we shake the book and make some numbers fall out? Just hold it tight and give it a few good shakes. If you're watching this on an iPad, you could give it a little bit of a shake, but be really gentle. Phew, thanks. Math is just so boring. It's not like you can dance to it. Actually, you can. Music has a lot of math in it. In fact, it was a mathematician who discovered that different lengths of string produce different musical sounds. Hi, my name is Pythagoras. Pythagoras is an ancient Greek smart dude. If you look up here at the music notes, you can see math. For instance, we have our time signature, four over four, the top number tells you how many beats in a bar. The bottom number tells you the note value for each beat. The space between the two up and down lines is one bar. So a quarter note is one fourth of a note. And to the right of that, you can see a whole note, which equals the whole bar or four fourth notes or four beats. Because of his math, you're able to make the guitars you have today. Welp, thanks for ruining music for me. Now all I hear are numbers. I think you're missing the point. Math isn't all about numbers. Arithmetic, another word for math with numbers, is super helpful, but it's only one part of math. Math is also about exploring, about finding new ways to get places and helping you find your way back. For centuries, sailors navigated using the stars, special measuring tools, and lots of math. You can see the globe up above, the longitude lines going up and down, latitude going side to side, and you can see they're all labeled with numbers and degrees. We also see a chronometer and sextant, both tools used to help navigate the world. Modern explorers calculate how much force and fuel is needed to get a rock and past your atmosphere and out into space. Take that, gravity. Speaking of exploring, you've barely checked out Earth. We have lots of beautiful things to see. Math is here in your nature too. Math is about finding shapes and patterns. See, symmetry is where two or more parts match each other, like the sea star, butterfly, or snail. A fractal is a special pattern made up of smaller copies of itself, like the snowflake. Oh, no, you don't. You're making it all about math again. But it's my turn to teach you something. Introducing Earth's greatest invention, pizza! That does look interesting. How big is that thing? Oh, that's easy. It's, um, let's see. See, I've got some straight rulers, but my pizza is circular. Wait, how do you measure this thing? 
I know, and the answer is easy as pie. Pie represents a number. It's a super long number, so you usually shorten it to 3.14. This is pie, not this pie. It's a sort of cheat code to figure out the size of a circle. Pi times diameter equals the circumference. Pi is also what's called an irrational number, which means it goes on forever and never repeats. Like this, pi equals 3.14159265358979. Well, that was unexpected. I never thought I'd say this. But this is too much pie for me. That's an easy fix. Let's just grab the book and shake all this pie off the page. Phew, that's better. I'll admit, some of this math stuff is cool. I'm okay. But math can still be pretty frustrating. Like how there's only one right answer. That's true. But it's also what makes math so helpful. Math gives us a set of rules everyone can agree on, so we know how far to travel to get places, how fast we're moving on our way, and how much things cost when we get there. Hmm, that's true. So if we're driving at five miles an hour and it takes us two hours to get there, that means we've gone 10 miles. And if a sundae costs $4.50 and an ice cream cone costs $2, then we need $6.50. Okay. Well, I'm ready to test that out. You know, math is a part of so many things I already love. I guess I don't need to try to love it at all. It turns out I already do. Great! You love math. My work here is done. Time to head home. Thanks for your help. Where did you say you're from anyway? Planet Homework. Yikes. Do not worry about your difficulties in mathematics. I can assure you, mine are still greater. Albert Einstein. The end. Thanks so much for sharing the story with me and Chat and Read. Don't forget to like and subscribe.